Coach Smith, and I want to come on and show you some football stations. We bring this out in the fall at the beginning of the year after our throwing and catching um, unit, and then we also bring it back for our Super Bowl week. So I've got some fun stations that I've kind of incorporated from some other great PE teachers and then tweaked it to make it um, work best for our numbers here at Baker. Now, we always start with a uh, this or that, something fun um, warm-up that they can do on their spot so that we have our equipment already ready to go. Now, our main focus, we obviously don't um, work on a full uh, tilt game. There's a lot of rules that go into it, but we do give them the skills. Like we talk about running backs and how to hold the ball. We talk about throwing and the difference between throwing a regular ball as well as a football, um, having their fingers on the laces, um, following through to the opposite hip, those sort of things. And then we work on um, throwing and catching. We work on some agility. We also work on kicking. So I'm gonna show you those stations, so let's get to it. So with our foaling, it's just like bowling. We do give them only one chance. Now we have only set up six pins per lane. That's plenty um, for them to get enough excitement with the foaling. Now I will give you a tip. If you have the diagram, the floor diagram, it's worth putting pieces of tape on the floor so that they know exactly where to put the pins when they knock them down. But when it's their turn, they're gonna stand at the cone, they're gonna throw the ball and try to knock down all six pins. They get one chance, they will then go reset their pins and bring their ball back and hand it to the next person. It's real important that they don't throw these because we use the harder rubber balls for this activity uh, and we certainly don't wanna hit anybody in the face with the hard rubber football. We also allow the younger students to scoot closer to up to give them a better chance of being successful and then we back the older kids up a little bit farther away to make it more challenging for them. So the next activity is flag tag. This is a great opportunity for you to have your kids practice putting on your flag belts for future activities. We have a coned off area here. They get a flag out of the bucket. We tell them that it's just like putting on a belt and that they may have to adjust the strap, but it gives them a great opportunity to practice and then tighten it if they need to. And in this activity, when they're inbounds, they are trying to pull the flag of someone else. If your flag gets pulled, you simply take it outside the black line in the corner over there, reset, meaning put your flag back on, and then when you are ready to go, then you can step back in the cone area and start playing, trying to grab that flag. Now the one thing that we did, the one issue that we did have, they weren't backing out behind the black line to put on their flags. They were standing in the playing area. And then they'd get frustrated when students would pull their flag. So make sure you tell them outside the black line or wherever your designated area is, put the flags on. And then once you're in the game, it's free. Uh, there is no safe zone, so they can pull your flag. So great opportunity to practice with those flags, flag tag or flag grab. One thing with the younger kids, they really struggled with the belts. So an alternative, especially for kinder and first, is to have them use a scarf and so they just tucked it in it has to be longer than their fingertips if they have a shirt that goes far down then we tell them that they need to tuck it in as well and so now it just becomes a flag tag and so they are pulling the scarf um, and if they pull the scarf they hand it back to the person they again go outside the black line to reset and put their scarf back in but an alternative to the belts these are great. So this station here is a simple station and you can um, add more to it. We just put the noodles with the um, cones. We just stuck it in. And a hint on that is if you will drop a deck ring on top, it will help it stay sturdy because otherwise it's just gonna fall over. But they are just weaving in and out, practicing holding the ball correctly. And I thought that might be a little boring, but I have to say they loved it. So what we had them do is practice tucking and clawing, we like to say claw here, have a um, finger on each side of the end of the ball like that, and then they are just tucking it in and running. So they are weaving in and out of the um, cones and touching the black line and then coming back, weaving uh, through the cones and then handing it to their next partner. When they hand it off, the partner is going to alligator chomp and chomp it and then tuck it. So it is a grab, tuck, and run. So it works on handing the ball off as well as um, receiving that handoff and moving. So they enjoy this a lot. They will get pretty sweaty with this one. So this station here, we have put out spots. So for example, if I'm in the green group, I'm gonna have one partner on the green spot and the other one across from them. And they are just working on partner passing. Now we do that with our K through three. We also have 
um, a basket of balls over there that you can use um, as a variety. They can differentiate and figure out which ball they want to use. Some are softer, some are harder, so you can allow that student choice if you want. But this has been a great uh, practice station. For our older kids, fourth and fifth, we have the quarterback start. They say hut or hike and they back up and their partner runs and you are throwing a pass on the run. And that was very beneficial to a lot of them learning to catch on the run because that is one of their teeks. So we do have a couple of stations that we do outside. As you can see, we have our kickoff. These students will have a tee and a ball um, and they are trying to kick off. Now, what we do on this is we have the students stand behind the cone, which is farther back away from the ball. And then the, the coach will blow the whistle when she sees that everybody is ready and has the ball set then she will blow the whistle. That group will then kick it as far as they can and then go chase down their ball. They will bring it back, hand it to their partner, and their partner gets to set it up on the tee how they like, waits for the whistle, and when the coach blows the whistle, that group goes, and you just get as many turns as you can. We um, have the whistle just because we don't want someone to get kicked with the ball uh, in the face, and so we like to have them kick all at the same time. Another station that we have outside is called Jackpot, and the kids love Jackpot, and if you don't know what Jackpot is, you have one person that is the thrower, the rest of the group is on the other end, you throw the ball, and whoever catches it gets to become uh, the new thrower and would switch places. So if I'm the thrower, I throw it, whoever catches, switch places with me, and I begin uh, go down and try to be a catcher with the other group. Now, we thought we might have some issues with pushing and shoving because sometimes it gets a little competitive. They did a great job, but just warn them on that. Um, but another fun station is jackpot. So another station we added for our younger kids to work on accuracy and just more practice to throw the football is our target throws. So we have these really cool inflatables that we got off of Amazon. We use them. Um, they turn the other way and they are catchers for baseball. So multi-purpose, they're great. I'll link them below, but you can either try to hit the targets or in the net or one of the logos. And we just printed off some logos from uh, favorite NFL players or excuse me, teams. We have the Dallas Cowboys, we have the Patriots and we have the um, Kansas City Chiefs. So um, we tell them that when it's their turn, they stand behind the line and they are throwing and trying to hit one of those targets. They go get the ball, bring it back and hand it to their partner. So this uh, station here in the middle, we utilize this middle area and we just tell them to grab a scarf and then on our projector we have playing, uh, they will do a follow along with some toss and catch um, type things just to work on hand-eye coordination. It gives us another station that we can use uh, because our groups are larger. So that is something that you can also incorporate. We also have done hula hoops as well. So just something else if you need um, more stations because you have those larger classes. So I hope this has provided some station ideas or maybe got you thinking on something that you can do for your class. I know that my kids have really enjoyed it. I will tell you one station tip. When you are assigning stations, always assign them to a specific cone color. For example, if I'm going to the running back station, I'm gonna say running backs green, running backs red. And so assign them to a specific cone because then when they rotate, whether it's to foaling or um, partner passing, they're always looking for that same cone color. So if I assign them to green, then the next station, they're looking for that green cone. And you don't have those fights or arguments over um, who's at what cone and how many people are in a specific cone line versus not anybody in another. It's just a great classroom management tool that someone taught me, and so I wanna pass it on to you. I hope these stations are helpful to you, whether it's in the fall football, exposing your kids to something that they may not have ever played, or Super Bowl week is a great time to use uh, stations as well, but um, make it a great day.